It is a wild Wednesday. We'll be talking Minnesota Wild. We'll be talking Jordan Leopold. We'll be talking trade deadline, and we'll be talking shootout win. But first, we are uh, uh, in the in the uh, build up to the NCHC Frozen Face Off at the Target Center. Uh, you know, we're talking to some college hockey guests. We had Bob Motzko last week. We're looking forward to, to Dave Haxtall and, uh, and Scott Sandlin. Uh, and today, uh, tonight, uh, it's our pleasure to be joined by the captain of the University of North Dakota. And I, I, I still want to say Fighting Sue. I, it's, it's, it's so hard for me not to. I, and I mean, I, I was just reading a Q&A with you in the, in the Grand Forks Herald. Stephen Patton, uh, the guest, by the way. Uh, I was just reading a Q&A with you, said that one of the things that drew you initially to the, to, to the program or caught your attention was the cool logo. And it was, it was a fantastic logo. I mean, I, I understand, you know, the need for political correctness and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, but it is, I mean, I'm a diehard Gopher fan. I mean, I mean I'm going to give it to you right away. I mean, lifelong <laughs> diehard Gopher fan. But, I mean, I miss the nickname. I, I, I do miss the nickname. Yeah. Hey, I... Uh, it's something that you're sure. Well, I tell you what I miss more than the nickname is uh, is the WCHA. Uh, so I'm going to take your temperature here from uh, you're up in Grand Forks. We're down here in Minneapolis. Uh, a couple of years away, uh, you know, in terms of league play. Now, I certainly saw each other in the Frozen Four last year. i got to ask you, two years apart now, uh, you know, in, in terms of being in the same conference, do you still hate the Gophers? <laughs> I have to say I do. <laughs> you know what really bummed me out? You know what bummed me out, Stephen, is is uh, I got some uh, I got some media information on you today uh, in, in, an e- in an email, and there was a link to a YouTube video that was you you know uh, barking at the Gopher bench. Uh, it was the third period of a game that the Gophers were up on you five to one, and you and you were barking at the bench. And I went to it right away because I I mean all the I mean I love all the shit that goes with the rivalry. Uh, it is a podcast, so you can swear. Uh, just so you know, okay. we're not we're not live on the radio. It's the internet. You can swear. You can say fucking Gophers if you want them. You say fuck the Gophers, but uh, I mean, I, I, I love, I love the, you know, I love the, the, the melees and the handshake lines and, and all the bullshit. I mean, it's just fun. You know, it's, it's, as long as it doesn't get too stupid, it's fun. So I wanted to see what I wanted to see what you were saying to the Gopher bench, but the video had gotten pulled. So now you got to tell me what were you barking at the Gopher bench? I don't, I don't really remember. I think I was just trying to call up their bench. It was a rough game for us. They, uh, they gave it to us and wanted to get something going, a little intensity going maybe for the guys. Uh, maybe it was a little too late, but. Set the bar base for the next series of playoffs. Hey, uh, when you when you get a chance to talk to Coach Hackstall, uh, do me a favor. Make sure there's still no bad blood because years ago I called Darcy Zajac a punk and a thug, and then Hackstall wouldn't he wouldn't talk to me for like two years. We bur- we buried that, we, we buried the hatchet. I mean, he, I, I've talked to him since, but I had uh, it was it was after a melee at uh, at uh, Mariucci where uh, where he took R.J. Anderson head first into the boards. It was. Uh, the, it was, uh, uh, well, I think it might have been one of the big uh, handshake brawls. It might have been the first of the handshake brawls. But I, I, yeah, there's a few of them. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the only t- two teams I've ever seen, you know, have trouble with the, with the handshake line. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, when I say I hate North Dakota, I mean, it's, I mean, people got to understand that there's a difference between really like, like rivalry hate and Al Qaeda hate. Uh, you know, I mean, I yeah. hate Al Qaeda. I mean, I would pull I, as, as much as it pains me to admit it. I would pull Mario Lamaru out of a burning building. I mean, I would. I wouldn't enjoy. I wouldn't enjoy it. And, and I might not run back in for his dog. But I mean, I'd, I'd pull him out of a burning building. I mean, so I mean, hate hate's a relative term. And you know, when I go to Grand Forks, I got friends up there. I got I got you know North Dakota fans that, that I can hang and shoot the shit with. I mean, it's college hockey folk are good folk is really the bottom line. So uh, anyway, Steve, uh, uh, you, uh, we, we want to talk to you a little bit about the league. Uh, you know, do, okay. do, do, do you miss the WCHA? I mean, do, do, do you miss, you know, I mean, I know you're in a great league. The NCHC yeah. is a phenomenal league. And it, in some ways, is it even better than the WCHA? Because you don't have any, any soft spots at the bottom. And the WCHA always did. I think that's the biggest thing is just the, the dirty in the league. Every team can beat anyone every night. But that's also, you know, maybe a negative where it's hard to win games in this conference. And, and I think we see it this year. Our, our top teams in our conference are also the top teams in the country. And I think that was maybe the plan coming into this conference. But uh, I do miss the WCHA with the rivalries with obviously Minnesota and Wisconsin. And those teams, that, you know, rival, rivalries that were built in, in past years, you know, in early, early 50s, 60s, 70s, and all the way through, you know. So that, that's something I miss for sure. Hey, Stephen, this is uh, Tony D, and I write for Hockey Buzz. Um, I'm part of the Wild Wednesday crew here. What, what I wanted to talk to you about is, is some of these uh, other NCHC teams. Uh, I know Miami uh, features Riley Barber. They have Louis Belpedio on there. Omaha has a kid, uh, Avery Peterson. Can you kind of talk about um, 
uh, your direct competition in the league and, and kind of um, what you've seen out of those teams headed into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, every team's got a t- t- couple of really top players. Obviously, we're facing Miami this weekend, so, you know, we've seen a have to look at, at their top players at Barber and, and Zarnick and obviously their young guys also. But it's, uh, it's a very competitive, competitive league, and, and every team's got a couple of those guys you just got to really look out for and, and make sure you know them around the ice. Hey, Steve, Scott Schweitz. Um, just wanted to uh, to bring up the tournament. Um, the first round, you guys are going to face Miami, Ohio, and uh, we talked about you know national rankings. You guys are obviously at the top, but uh, but Miami is is just nipping at your heels, uh, ranked fourth. So um, obviously that's going to be a, a tough challenge. But beyond that, out of the uh, out of the top eight teams nationally, five of which are in your your league. So I mean that the tournament in general is going to be be uh, be kind of a gauntlet. So who uh, who's going to be your biggest competition that you see going into it? Yeah, obviously we've, we've got Miami this weekend, so that's what we're really worried about. We um, trying to clinch that, that first place, obviously, uh, and then play CC in the first round to get to the tournament. But, you know, Miami's a great team. they, they got a lot of firepower up front. Um, Denver's a team that's on the rise here, too. They're, they're battling hard, and Omaha's obviously through the all season long that they can play also. So, I mean, the top four or five teams in our conference are, are just extremely strong. you got to look out for all of them. Hey, Steven, I, I just got to say, b- before I bring this up, I swear to God, I'm not bringing it up to talk shit. I mean, I, I'm, I'm seriously, no, I'm, I'm not, in all honesty, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, 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 am, I am curious as to, as to how a team deals with what happened to you in the semifinals last year. Because, you know, I mean, Minnesota came into that Frozen Four. I thought, I thought the Gophers looked like a machine. I mean, they took apart St. Cloud. I thought they were unbeatable. I really honestly, I, I thought they were going to roll through you. And I'm not going to lie to you, I think you guys, you guys had a slight edge in playing that game. I mean, nobody, n- yeah. nobody, nobody dominated, but I mean, I thought you guys had an edge. And when you went on the power no, play I... late, when you went on the power play late, I'm thinking, fuck. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, and, and I've, I've been, I was in the Gopher locker room in 2005 when North Dakota beat him at the Frozen Four. And there's a finality to that locker room. Seniors don't want to take the sweater off. I mean, it's, it's tough. But with 0.6, yeah. it's got to be, it's got to be killer. I mean, how do you get, how do you get through that? Well, like you said, I mean, it was a great game. Both teams played really hard. And, and if we did have a bit of a net there, we, we kind of felt like, you know, with the power play, especially at the end of the game, when it's overtime, we thought, you know, we've got a bit of an advantage here. But the way that ended was just such a sour, sour case. I sat, I sat around all summer and just thought about it, and it, it haunted me all summer. Just a pain in the ass all summer, and especially at the start of the season. So I think for us, though, we, we kind of really use that. Uh, since we have a very similar team to what we had last year, didn't lose very many guys. Uh, same core players and, and maturity. I think that's a biggest thing we've used and to grow up and, and learn from. And I mean the, the the bad luck. You just you can't make it up because when when Hall takes the shot, his stick hits hits a hits a you know a UND stick, which kind of stops yeah. the shot. I mean that, that, that the shot's not deflected, but his but his stick stops and the shot gets released at a point that the goaltender's not expecting it. It's one of those goofy right. little in between shots, you know. And, and, I mean, and and, Justin yeah, Hall's a good kid, but he's not a sniper. The clock can, can stop before it kind of stops too. Oh yeah, I mean, it just depends on how quick the guy is on the trigger. You know, at the face off. Right. I mean, seriously. That's I mean, right. if, if the guy sneezes on the button before the puck's dropped at the face off, that doesn't that, that goal doesn't get in. Steve, yeah. Steven, uh, in doing some research ab- uh, about you, you lead all uh, Division One players uh, in hockey in games played. Um, I, you know, I think you only missed one game in 126 games. Can you talk about what it what it means to you to be the captain of the uh, of the North Dakota hockey team? Yeah, um, it's a huge honor. You know, it's one of the top programs in the country and every year, and and you know the history and tradition, and it's been built from guys who have. We're in the captain here. Guys who have come through the program is something that uh, I really take to heart. So, uh, obviously, I'm really honored to, to get the opportunity to be a captain of this team, and um, it means a lot to me. Hey, Stephen, uh, uh, thanks a lot for joining us. I appreciate it. And I, I say this with all sincerity. Please do say hello to, to Coach Haxtell for me. Um, I, he, he, we have, no, I swear, I swear to God. I mean, I, I think he's a good guy. I got nothing I but respect. I will. And tell him I, I hope to run into him uh, at the Target Center. I, I should be around for the for the playoffs. I'd love to love to chat uh, chance to talk with him. Sounds good. Thanks Th- for having me, guys. Thanks, Stephen. Good luck to you. Stephen Stephen Patton, captain of the University of North Dakota. Fill in the blank. Uh, I mean, uh, I've, I've, my favorite signs are the ones that say "fighting who." 
And it's spelled W H I O U X. The fighting who? What a, what a mess that is. How do you how do you ever have anything that matches up or it? I even think, means anything. There. I think they did the right thing. I like the I like no name. I mean, yeah. at least for now. I mean, it works for the stakes. It works for North Dakota. I mean, Agreed. If they had kind of a sal, you could call her call him like Cindy Lou Who. I mean, there, <laughs> there's <laughs> what the hell? Oh, yeah, I don't know where to go. For. <laughs> yeah, that's just there's just there's Good time just, for a break. I'm gonna mic drop it and I'm out. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, yes, we, we do. We, we we will abruptly change lanes by by taking a quick break because we'll come back, start talking. Uh, the draft, uh, uh, deadline day, deadline day, not draft day, deadline day in the National Hockey League, uh, specifically with uh, with the moves made by the Wild and maybe some of their competitors, and uh, take a look at the week that was and the weeks that will be still for the Minnesota Wild. What are you drinking tonight, Jason? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly. I'm drinking a Lithbridge Hop Dish. It's Pub Talk from a Minnesotan perspective. I'm always really proud of where I'm from. I'm super proud of Minnesota, and I think Minneapolis is awesome. I think St. Paul is awesome. I think they're a really awesome cultural epicenter. With great local guests. So the other voice you hear in the room today is uh, Jerry Fagerberg from the City Pages talk about the uh, official Minnesota tall boy, which uh, your piece is on the cover of the City Pages today. It is on the cover. came out today. Talking movies. All right, you saw Boyhood. I need to hear what you thought. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Sports. A guy who was undrafted knew what was coming. And everything else you talk about at the pub. Let's not pretend like we know what we're talking about. Well, what do you think I do every show? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason McGovern and Molly Burke. Listen at mnpubcast.com or subscribe on iTunes. We want to just find meaning in life. I do want to do due diligence to the NCHC Frozen Face Off, not just because they are a client of ours, but it is a fantastic event. And it is going to be at the Target Center. It's March 20th to 21st. And they've got some fantastic deals right now. Full session ticket packages for all four games start as low as 60 bucks, And they will have single uh, game tickets going on sale February 23rd. You can call 1-888-9-AXSTIX. A-X-S-T-I-X. Or go to TargetCenter.com. Go to the Target Center box office. It's going to be a great event. They've also got, you know, this uh, fan fest going on. They're going to have live bands. They're going to shut down part of First Ave, part of, uh, First Ave there and have bands on the street. We're going to be podcasting live for part of the event and if you are coming from out of town which you know obviously the university of minnesota is no longer it's so most of the fans who come here are going to be traveling uh whether it's from grand fork st cloud duluth uh, you know miami of ohio denver university whatever you're going to want a hotel room and obviously there's a wealth of hotel rooms in downtown Minneapolis. As, as great as a, a venue as the X was for these events, uh, you know, downtown Minneapolis has got so much more going on, so many more hotel rooms. And if you go to my Twitter account or my Facebook account, you will find a post or a tweet that shows uh, the, 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 the NCHC Frozen Faceoff coming on March 20th, 21st, and where you can go to book discounted hotel rooms. Because the NCHC got together with the, you know, the Chamber of Commerce and the hotels and, and, and put together some packages where folks can get, uh, get a break on hotel rooms. Just tell them you're coming for the NCHC Frozen Faceoff. But you'll see the link on my Twitter account and my Facebook account. Just click on it, and, uh, and they'll lead you right to, uh, to discounted hotels, which should be a fantastic, fantastic event. Thanks, thanks again to Stephen Patton. Can you hear me? Hello. Thanks again to Stephen Patton, the, the North Dakota fighting, whatever, uh, cat, hockey captain. Um, uh, thanks for joining us. And I do want to mention again, the NCHC Frozen Faceoff coming to uh, the Target Center, March 20th, 21st. You want tickets? Call 888-9-AXS-TIX. I got it right that time. The tongue twister didn't get me. 1-888-9-AXS-TIX. Or just go to TargetCenter.com or the Target Center box office. They got single games on sale. If you want to just go single, you know, pick up whichever game you want to see. If you want to go for the whole thing, they've got the full package with all sessions starting as low as 60 bucks, and it's going to be a fantastic tournament. I mean, uh, I, I, again, I feel for them last year. I mean, the, the NCHC is a powerhouse conference. It is, the, without a doubt, the best in the in the, in the land. I mean, they they knew what they were doing when they put this thing together. They hand selected these teams and they made it a beast. And you, I really, I mean, they should have had a great, great uh, inaugural event a year ago, and they had no luck at all. I mean, your regular season champion, your number one seed lost on home ice. Uh, you know, North Dakota lost in the semis. I mean, just, it, it, it just Duluth didn't make it. St. Cloud didn't make it. And North Dakota was out early. I mean, it, it couldn't have gone worse for them from a, just like a PR, ticket sales, you know, geography kind of standpoint. I mean, but this year, it could, uh, it could and should all be different. 
Uh, uh, Duluth should be there. I mean, Duluth is, is looking like a home ice team that should be there. Uh, North Dakota is going to be there. There's no way they're going to choke it up on home ice. They're going to be there for sure. Yeah, Miami of Ohio is a great team. They should be there. And, and I'm hoping by Bob Motzko uh, that my buddy can get his squad uh, to recover from that tough weekend up in Grand Forks and get his get his boys down to the Target Center as well because we also will be there doing a uh, doing a show from Kieran's, I believe, uh, during the whole Fan Fest thing. So it's going to be a great event, the NCHC Frozen Faceoff, Target Center, March 20 and 21. And continue to check my uh, my Facebook and uh, Twitter accounts. You'll see uh, I periodically post the links to uh, to get uh, discounted hotel uh, reservations in Minneapolis for that tournament. So, guys, let's talk a little wild. It is Wild Wednesday. Scotch Whites, Tony Dean, Jeff Dubay, Jason McGovern, Shannon Rosenthal to join shortly. Um you're just your impressions of the of, of the uh, deadline. You know they they get uh, they get Stewart, they get Leopold. I, I'll tell you what, I, the Leopold story is a great story, and they needed a left-handed defenseman. I, I get that. Stewart's intriguing because this guy has had two 28 goal seasons. He's a rugged power forward that scores greasy goals and fills a need that they have. I mean, a, a legitimate need. Now he had, he didn't hadn't done shit this year sitting in Buffalo, which tells me this guy just didn't give a damn because he's on a bad team and he mailed it in. And uh, you know. I guess I don't have a problem with that as long as he flips the switch here. Uh, I mean, I, he was on the NHL Network when the trade broke, and they told him about it, like during a live interview. And, and right away, he perked right up and said, hey, I get to play in the playoffs. So, well, don't count your chickens, but, I mean, at least at least we got his attention. I mean, because he, he really slept walked through the season in Buffalo. Well, I was going to say, watching the game last night, when he made that pass to, uh, you know, the kind of, rung through the legs of the defender and then eventually uh, landed on Dumba's stick for the for the second goal. You could see in his face. I mean, it was just pure emotion that, you know, he was fired up, he was happy. I mean, it, I mean, it, you're going to have a change of attitude when you go from a Buffalo to a contender. Yeah. And when you have, and I guess somebody had, had stated, and it was kind of prior to we, for us getting him, he was like like the joke of like the, uh, the feed, the chat feed on ESPN. They're like, Stewart this, Stewart that, you know, he's just sitting around, nobody wants him. I mean, it's, it was really, you know, until kind of uh, the Wild picked him up with, with what was, you know, what was, I think, a good deal. I mean, well, second it, round it, pick, right? Second round pick in 2017. Oh, so, okay. I mean, it's, okay. it's, you're not giving up the one that's going to be a pretty deep draft coming up now. But, but anyways, uh, just seeing the, the fact that I think it might revitalize him, and he does have some speed. He's got a lot of, a lot of weight. He threw a, a heavy check. You know that really was disruptive last night. If if he can play that type of role, that we don't really have somebody that can do that. I mean, I'm all for it, and I, I think it's a, it's a great addition when we have to play the likes of the Blues three times here on the stretch. We have to play Anaheim. We have to play. Uh, you know, there's a, a number of teams that have have some size that we're going to have to deal with. You know, who's been a difference maker too to me is Bergenheim. I mean, he's he's out there hitting people. He's made more meaningful hits in two games than Clutterbuck did last season. I mean, you know, Clutterbuck, I was a joke, is the master of the meaningless hit. You know, the crowd effect hit, the oohs and the ahs, picking off somebody with his head down right after he gives up the puck or something meaningless. Uh, but, I mean, Bergenheim's been, been out there making things. I, I think he's been stirring the pot. I, I like him. You have to really take into context, too, what uh, Fletcher added here. So he, he was able to add Bergenheim. He was able to add Devin Dubnik. He was able to add Jordan yeah. Leopold and Chris Stewart without giving up one young kid that's a part of this young core without giving up any assets that anybody cares about, really. A second-round pick isn't nothing. But a second-round the road. A second-round pick isn't nothing, but when you get an opportunity to, to add a guy like Chris Stewart, who um, universally was the youngest and probably most impactful player um, available that we knew about for trade in this group, because this, this group at the trade deadline this year uh, outside of Keith Yandel, you know, some want to argue Antoine Vermette. This was kind of a junky group of guys. Uh, the, the bigger trade, you know, for uh, potential now young players, contracts, that type of thing, was the deal that happened between the Jets and Buffalo. You, you know, when you, when you have Bogosian, you have Air, uh, Evander Kane, you have uh, Tyler Myers in there. A lot of, a lot of the trades that happened, um, guys were getting added that, don't really fit what we have going on here. I mean, if you're really looking at it, you know, maybe they wanted James Wisniewski, but he's a guy that has underperformed in, in Columbus, and he has many years on the contract. You know, uh, a lot of people thought that Stewart would go for a lot more than just a second-round pick. They thought mm -hmm. um, all of the East Coast teams were in on him, and uh, a lot of a lot of people thought he would go to Boston for 
what they got uh, the Connolly kid from Tampa Bay, and that was like a second round pick and some and some. And that Connolly kid broke his hand. He's never going to play a game this year. And so when you when you add a, a Stewart like we saw last night, and he goes on Koivu's line, he's going to get an opportunity to play against the two teams that dumped him in the Central this year. He because he's a former uh, Colorado. Uh, Avalanche. First round draft pick. Drafted by Colorado, traded for Eric Johnson. And he, uh, it was it was uh, the, the Stewart and it was Shattenkirk that got traded for Eric Johnson. And then he goes from St. Louis to um, Buffalo in the Ryan Miller trade. And he was, he was a key piece in that trade. So he's been dumped by two teams that have a tendency to take liberties with, with Granlin, take liberties with Brodeen, take liberties with Spurgeon, especially... Um, with the playoffs coming up here, and I guarantee you Stewart's going to punch somebody in the face, and I will be cheering very loudly. Do you think they need to sign him beyond this year? Do you think they have interest in that? I, I, would, I, would, I would say this is a great audition. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a great audition with what we have uh, dollars-wise, I would say, for a number of people, not just Stewart. I mean, obviously, Devin Dubnik is just, just nailing his audition. Um, but I think all these players, if they can find a, a role that fits them, um, I think they'll they'll be happy to stay at a place like this because we have a nice mixture of veterans and, and young talent. Um, if you can back that up with solid goaltending, if it does continue, I mean, you have a complete team. And so these players, I think, would want to stay here. Now, we'll see if, obviously, we, I mean, we rolled the dice with Molson last year and it was, it was a gong show. But yeah. uh, nice, I like that. Sorry, that's Skype. Not no, oh. that that was that was the reaction to Molson. I, 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 that was that was perfect. Was that like going down the drain? It was almost like a plant sound effect. Couldn't yeah. made it up. That was Couldn't sweet. Made it up. Yeah. But the uh, <laughs> but, but, but I mean, in comparison, I mean, you got Palmville the year before, and it, it, you know he had an extra year on his deal, but that worked out. We extended him. Yeah. Molson, not so much. I mean, we obviously let him walk, um, knowing that we were were in on the Vanek bit, but he wasn't a fit for the team. He just he he didn't have characteristics that were complementary of what we already had these other guys do and whether it's a whether it's a Bergenheim whether it's a, a Stewart uh, you know not sure about how Leopold's going to fit into the mix after this year but those guys truly have and he probably will because of left-handed D we are pretty yeah deep it, on the defense but if he uh, wants to be back next year he could probably be the seventh defender like minimum veteran deal type of and it sounds like that's what he's wanted for a long time so yeah. The other he's, thing, and he's a guy that's going to stick around. I mean, a uh, little little side note. I mean, a lot, a lot of people on Twitter were like, you know, after the letter and everything, are like, well, is Jordan, little Jordan, little eleven year old girl Jordan, going to do yes, going to do, uh, gonna do the let's play hockey? Uh, but they already had a, a couple, uh, you know, hockey immortalities lined up in uh, correct in Broughton and and Christians doing uh, doing the uh, let's play hockey. So he she actually is going to do it versus the Avalanche on Sunday. That's awesome. Which is awesome. That's very cool. You know, the other thing about Stewart, the knock on him has never been talent because, I mean, he's a guy with size. He's a guy that's willing to park in front of the goaltender, score goals in the paint. He's willing to hit people. Um, he can even skate for a big body. The knock has always been focused with him and effort. And and I think the, the gamble and the mentality has been for Chuck Fletcher is if you bring these guys in here around Zach Parise, around Ryan Suter, around Miko Koivu, then, then they're going to buy in or they're gone. Well, you and can't really go play for a bubble team and not be engaged, right? Like, and, sure. and wouldn't this be the thing that would make him want to play, too? I mean, you said, too, Puffy, that he got pumped when he saw it on TV, that, oh, he, was, yeah. or, mm-hmm. that he was coming here. So this is the kind of thing that is going to make him want to play. Yeah, he's going from Tankville to the, the, the playoff hunt. But beyond that, he's going to a team where if, if you don't go out there and you don't work, which is, which is something that's been an indictment of him, then, then you stick out, and and it's not you know there's there's no there's no fringe to hide anywhere. And Zach Zach Parise stopped by your locker, and when this guy comes and tells you stuff, there's never one shift that you can point out of him that he's not doing what he's asking of you to do. And I and I think that this is a gamble. This is a guy who too, who is, he could be the biggest free agent next year and earn himself a huge payday. So I mean, there, there's multiple motivators. That's why I think this deal was really really smart. Um, it was interesting that that um, you only give a second. You don't give any prospects at all. Uh, you know, it sucks to give up second round picks consistently. We've given four to Buffalo in the last three years. But, that, but bring up that point is that's the reason this happened because I mean, Chucky and uh, 
and the Buffalo GM are they're buddies. Tim Murray, yeah. yeah they, they, I mean, it all came to be because at the end of it, Murray had deals fall through, and he's like, "Make me an offer. Yeah. Make me an offer that's worthwhile." And and you got him. I mean, it it kind of was a thing that it came out that he was, you know, inquiring about Stewart for the past year. Yeah. You know, about about what's going to cost, and the cost was too high at that point because it probably involved a first rounder and some prospects. But at the end of the deadline, when he just wants to gain assets because Stewart's going to walk anyways. But why not get something out of the deal? Especially, you're, I mean, they were on a fire sale. I mean, Buffalo traded away everything but the puck bag. Everything and, but Matthew Molson. And literally, and literally, <laughs> they, I mean, they, it, it, I mean, they, they have two mediocre backup goaltenders now. Yeah. I mean, they're they're maybe will win one more game the rest of the year. Sure, and that's a point there. I, the the other the other Stewart point I wanted to make is that this is a guy that brings nasty. If if you take a liberty with any of his guys on the ice, he's coming for you. I can't and, wait. Can't wait for Sunday's game. I can't yeah, wait for it. I can't wait for it. One. And he's infectious. And and I think Matthew Dumba has 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 shown a little bit of that but he, he's just a little bit small to do it in the nhl and stewart's not at all so you know wherever stewart bounces around in the lineup you know they start him up with koivu um they, they bump him from that line he looks like he's probably going to slot in with charlie Coyle and nino niederreiter that line is as big uh as big. any any in the west and, and it's going to be able to compete against anaheim with with the kesslers and the Getzlavs of the world mm-hmm. you're going to be able to compete against a st louis team that that loves takes pride david backus loves beating up on the minnesota wild and proving it to these minnesota uh born hockey players that st louis is a tougher team Backus is born in minnesota hey speaking of which uh not to not to completely go add and get off track but did you, there was a graphic last night showing how many WCHA hockey players we have on the squad. I well, mean, it's, it's, it's gotten it's, crazy. It's sick. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, it has. from everything from like Wisconsin to North Dakota to the U of M to I mean, all to Colorado College, UND or UMD, I should say UMD. Yeah, uh, I mean, there. I think we have like thirteen or fourteen guys on it. our roster, and we're the well, by far the most in the league. Well, and it, it's it's such a change because you you, you knew well, you know when we we're being run by. Le Canadian with the La Habitant, <laughs> that it was just nothing but Stefan Bayou all day long. Oh. I mean, I mean nah. but seriously, I mean, and I'm not saying I'm not yeah. saying that, that that the local professional NHL franchise should run their operation in a provincial manner. I mean, I'm not saying you should you should you know make sure you go out there and get the Minnesota guys. But I mean, they the, fan, if, the if, fans if, do. If it's a, well, if it's a fit, I mean, you know what? Uh, Schrader was was a, was a first round pick back in the day, and they found a guy who's just just you know never found his niche in Vancouver. And he's and he's contributed here. You know, Vanek was was a, you know uh, an available free agent, uh, a guy who's a proven scorer, and they brought him in. Uh, you know, Leopold when they needed a left-handed defenseman. I mean, it's it's it's, it's been kind of weird that these guys have come available and been filled needs you know, that, that, in timely fashion for him. But uh, I mean, I'm not saying you got to go out there and get all Minnesota guys, but I mean, there is there is still a bias. It, it's dying slowly. But there's still a bias against the American college hockey player in certain realms of the National Hockey League. I mean, like you're, 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 you're diehard, dyed-in-the-wool, leatherneck Canadians. Uh, yeah, I think I told you this before. You know, my buddy Nate Miller, uh, you know, he, he, he graduated, what was he, 2000 was his was senior year? So, so, so he was with, he, was, he played for Sutter in, in, in his first camp with the Kings. And they were, they were, they were getting suited up. They're getting suited up for a, a preseason game, and it, he's going over the lines. He's got the he's got the big grease board. He's got the big grease board in the front of the locker room, and he's putting up line. He's got the he's got the opposing lines, and, and, and a little note under each guy, like tough in the corners, uh, you know, kind of a pussy, whatever. <laughs> this guy back down. This guy's gritty, whatever. You'll save that guy. And if and if, and if, and if, if, if if one of the players was an American college hockey player, it just said college underneath him, like fuck this guy, disregard. I mean, just. Like gritty in the corners, tough on the puck, college. I mean, just if, if a guy played college hockey, he was just dismissed. The thing about it is, though, in I mean, our, the, the, in, but I mean, the, the Canadian, the, there's still a Canadian mentality up there. If you don't come up through our junior ranks, if you're not from the fucking western, you know, the, if you're not from the plains, if you're not from a, you know, the the, the, the western, you know, the, the plains out there, and it, it, whatever. If you're not from Saskatoon or Moose Jaw, and and if you didn't play, you know, years of of junior hockey, if you played American college hockey, I mean, there's still there's still. Uh, you know, there, some guys will hold that against you. There's still people in this league who will hold that against you. It might be, but I think uh, the way our dynamic on our team is, I think a lot of times you're going to get good work ethic from players that, you know, played in the college hockey system. If yes. you get the right players. Um, 
and that fits in well with you know the the blue collar uh, system that Mike Yo has really you know established here. Right. They, they're not gonna. He's not gonna put up with people that are dogging it and not playing two way hockey. So you're getting good good college players or former college players that know how to play a good two way game and are gonna be are gonna be uh, you know blue collar players. That's what he wants. And people who play major junior, they do get more games than a collegiate player. But here's here's the thing that I've never understood. Is how how are these you know these people so convinced that that's a tougher way to develop that it's a it's a grittier tougher way to develop talent when everybody in that league is 19 or, or under or 20 or under I mean what's what's the cutoff age for 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 major junior No they I mean you can, you can play into like 21 22 years old I mean but the bottom line is you you come to college and you're playing against 21 year old freshmen yeah. you're playing against 24 year old seniors because they've already because they've been in the junior system I mean, before I, they went yeah. to college I mean they, you you are playing against I I bet the average age of an American college player is two years uh, higher than the average age of a major junior player. You're playing older, more mature, physical kids. I mean, it's, I, well, and it, you know, it's, I not, think, it's not always how it used to be. I mean, that, that was that a is trend. how it is now. That's how a trend that established when they started sending people to juniors. I mean, before it was, you got done with high school, you went on to college. I mean, but now it's well, you're you know, not you're not even a senior. You're going to play for a development league. Now, when I was and I, okay, I'm, I'm I'm a child of the '80s. In the '80s. If you weren't if you weren't hand picked out of high school, if you were not thrown, and for one thing, people got recruited when they were juniors and seniors. I remember Scarber signing into the state tournament. I mean, it's just outrageous how late people got recruited back in the day. But if you didn't get if you didn't get a, a, an offer out of high school, I mean, you'd graduate high school. Like Dave Snuggerud went to Hopkins. I, just, I can use this as an example. That's that's my alma mater. Did not have uh, an offer out of high school. Went and played, I believe, two years of junior hockey. But they played for the Vulcans for like a day, at least one full season, if not two. So that's what you would do. I mean, you would you would finish your high school career, then you'd go and play in the USHL until you're 20, and hope to snag an offer. Uh, you know, Nate Miller did the same thing. But I, I think I think it's the system is different with Canadian juniors because these kids are 14, 15 years old, and they start to get attention. You know, oh, yeah. uh, the, the McDavid kid, uh, a lot of these kids. I know. Even, I know. Edblad got the attention early. I knew Seth Ambrose when he was 14. I didn't know him, but I knew of him. I mean, I started reading his name when he was 14. And so the difference between juniors and doing college here is that um, there's a preference towards uh, programs. So uh, Dale Hunter was running the program in, like, London, I think. You know, the London Knights or whatever. Ontario, yeah. And so these kids end up in this program. They travel. They're 15, 16 years old. They're competing in, like, a semi-pro league. And so they learn the they learn the business of hockey. So I you know I think college hockey, um, junior juniors in America before college hockey, I think it's different. It's not necessarily a business; it's more of a sport. Yeah. So I think they're viewed differently. But if uh, for what it's worth, these Minnesota kids that go up to Penticton and play for the V's, yeah, fucking light it up. Oh, they destroy. I mean, it. Louis Nanny yeah. lit it up up there. I and, mean, Mike Riley like had ninety point seasons. Yes. Up there. And I then mean, so you so you look you look at a guy like uh, Zach Phillips who the Wild just gave up on, mm-hmm. right? He has to be traded. Uh, they gave him four years to try to improve his skating and 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 give a shit, and he didn't. Right? He's a kid that was a hundred points every year. Uh, up in uh, St. John, and and he's never going to translate to the NHL because he doesn't work. Because he, and and so I mean it goes both ways. You know you have you have college kids that you know I'd take a Sam Warning over a, a Zach Phillips any day of the week, and we took Zach Phillips in the first round. But Sam Warning's a kid that goes out, he can play every line, he kills himself, and he, and and I think that. There's certain gopher hockey kids now that look like they're too tiny to maybe make an impact in the NHL, but that's not necessarily the case. If you look at Jordan Schrader right now, the best thing that he's doing is he's able to to, to ha- gain separation with the puck on his stick, which is creating opportunity. So, it, you know, it was a shame he got pulled out of the lineup, but I don't think you pull Fontaine because Fontaine has been an X factor right, on right, every right. single line yep. this year. So I think we'll, we'll still Wait, see Schrader. Schrader doesn't, Tr- Schrader doesn't kill penalties. That, I think that really hurt him, Sure, uh, to be honest with you. And, and Kyle Brozniak right now, really, really good. Like, playing really, really well. Oh, Scott's he, pissed right no, now. Uh, I'm except for that funny, non-pass funny, last funny night. Funny thing about that is I, I spoke with somebody today on the phone. I'm like, I'm going to totally have to eat crow tonight Yes. because I was just bagging on this guy. And he has – his value, though, is on, like, the PK. I mean, his value is yes. I mean, on the defensive play, not on the offensive play, which yes. is exactly why you saw – and my knee-jerk reaction was like, why are you going to pull a trader when you could pull out – Kyle Brasiak. Why would you do it? But that's why you do it. Because because oh. you have to have somebody who can, especially with Zucker out, you have to have somebody that can can contribute to the penalty kill that has been lights out 
since the All-Star break. Yep. I mean, I think we've allowed one goal yeah. in upwards 40, of like... 44 Yeah, 44, 45 chances. I mean, it's, yeah. it's unreal. But and, and the way that they... The, if you watch it as a fan and you watch how they how they really, you know, the system and positionally and and how they shut it down... I mean, it's just great. I mean, how they and it's work, and it's and it's everybody's in a lane. They move, they communicate. I mean, it, it's it's really really impressive. The, it's kind of know, like it's kind of like reverse power play. Like if we could take their skills as far as like cycling and moving around, yes. and like put that onto our PP one. I mean, yeah. we'd have a lights out power play Hell because yeah. nobody on our power play moves their damn feet. And and so you, what's so interesting about you know being here on Wild Wednesdays about writing for Hockey Buzz, having Twitter. So I try to give Kyle, Kyle Braziak credit. And then I, I think his brother tells me to fuck myself because I had I'd savaged him earlier in the season. And then w- what I said to him was... His brother talks trash? Yeah, you? well, yeah, yeah. You know what the other thing? I think his brother... So he's from St. Paul. Fact, his brother knows who you are is pretty solid. He's from yeah, St. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Paul in, in Edmonton, Alberta, I'll right? I'll tell the police officer to go fuck himself. Well, he's a firefighter, too. I think oh, he's so a firefighter. Oh. Um, different St. Different Paul. Different St. Paul but, up uh, above the, uh, the border. What I explained was, I you know... When, when he's bad, I'm just going to say he's bad. And he's been really, really good right now. And then he was very, very good down the stretch last year. And I and I gave credit there, too. So when you tell me to fuck myself, I get it because it's a family member. <laughs> but I'm, also, you know, I'm always going to own my takes. So don't, I appreciate don't tell, it. Don't tell that to Jeff because he's counting down the minutes before he can go we've, do that. We've, uh, we've, nice. we've, well, we've, got, we've got a little off the beaten path here. And we're going we're gonna to take our final break and, and refocus here in a minute. Uh, but before we do, just so you understand the scope of the show and the, and the resources at our disposal, uh, we sent Scott Schweitz on a scouting uh, mission this past weekend to check out some wild prospects. Give us a quick report. What did you see? Actually, uh, I was really, really impressed uh, to see the, 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 uh, the Boston kids. I mean, you Where had were the, you? Where did you go? I went to South Bend. I oh, went to South Bend to visit nice. my nephew. You saw, you saw uh, Notre Dame play BC? Yep, yep. I saw, I saw Notre Dame play, so I saw you know Lucia. Um, he really didn't do a whole. I mean, Notre Dame didn't score uh, the first game. It's a weird it, team. It was a tight. It was a tight game. Um, all the goals were scored in the first period, and, and after that, I think things kind of got locked down. But really, I I did. Uh, I mean, I was impressed. I mean, you you commented today. I think about uh, the rankings and and that uh, uh, Gilmore didn't really show me a whole lot, um, but uh, why his Alex name, Tuck? Yeah, Tuck is is one that uh, for a freshman. His size and his speed and and just overall what that kid's going to be is really special. And he uh, he just had a presence on the ice. He plays on a line with Gilmore. Gilmore didn't stand out for me. Uh, Lucia had some moments, but uh, but that goalie for uh, for Boston was pretty solid. That's your Demko. Yeah, he's pretty solid, and yeah, uh, he's got. He's got some sexy pads too. I mean, he's got some. Uh, he's got some gold like pads. And they're... are we talking the inner thighs or like where? where no, like his what, gloves like and part? stuff. His gloves have got his blocker. I like the shiny gold, and I'm like. I mean, it almost kind of took away from the shiny gold of the uh, of the Notre Dame helmets, but no, it was a good it was a good uh, good matchup. If they split it one one, and uh, and I think um, I think overall we got we got three solid guys that are going to come up to the system. And I mean, you might not get them next year, but uh, a couple years from now, I think you're going to have some some pretty uh, well equipped minor league guys. That'll be something to watch too if Lu- Lucia or uh, Alex Tucker uh, turn pro next year. And I think I I always thought that he that Lucia would, uh, but coming from the the background makes me think he might stick it out for his senior year and graduate he certainly and, doesn't have to and get, and get his and get his degree from Notre Dame well look how bad the baby wild has been this year wouldn't you want one last year being a college kid well, and being sure. the top guy on campus and you with know? and with tuck I think with him he has probably the size and skill to make the jump but maybe it's something that we let uh, we let him play some heavy minutes uh, with Boston in another year or two and then uh, and then we kind of cycle him in it all depends probably on what his his desire and, and probably the desire of the club. He gets to play with the Gilmore kid. It's kind of a win-win, development wise. Yeah, they're on. The, yeah, like I said they're on the same line, and they, he, he Gilmore didn't stand out for me, but uh, but Tuck did. So I, I guess that probably says something. I got it. It's funny. I took a picture of uh, of Tuck, and I didn't realize that Gilmore was standing right next to him. All right, let's take our final break. We'll come back and get more deeply into uh, into the wild and the run that they continue to be on and what lies ahead. It's a wild Wednesday. 
The Rusty Gatenby Review is the entertaining show about entertainment from movies, music, and more. Award-winning TV guy Rusty Gatenby and his review is the podcast with the biggest cast in entertainment, part of the Alive and Social Network. You can get that Minnesota connection to Hollywood and beyond any time of the day or night simply by clicking on the RustyGatenbyReview.com. That's the RustyGatenbyReview.com, part of the Alive and Social Network. Hi, everybody. This is Alyssa. And this is Liz. And we're with The Focus Radio. Where our focus is to bring you resources to grow your business and double your income. Join us on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m. Central Time. TheFocusRadio.com. Hi, I'm Terry Daniel, and I've been a voice actor in Minneapolis for over two decades now. How often are you getting compliments on your voice? Now is the time to do something about it. If you're interested in getting into voiceovers, please contact me via my website at universalvoicetalent.com. We're back. Final 20 minutes or so of a wild Wednesday. We are commercial free for the rest of the way. So we can get uh, get into uh, into all things wild uh, a little more intensively at this point. I- I'm sorry, Tony. We're out at Bennett's. I, I just oh, yeah. Wanna, thank I, you for remembering. For I, remembering. I, I, remembering. I, think, I think Bennett's. I just had a little stroke. Especially Rem- like right me. now with the state hockey tournament going on with the Wild on a run like this. Yes. West 7th right now is going to be hockey central. But the, the Bennett family here um, has signed up for, for the Wild Wednesdays. And, You're my and, hero right now. <laughs> you are. You're my hero right now. And and I'm so I'm so Sing proud it. of uh Sing being it. here because uh, the Bennetts have always been very good to my family, and they are a hockey family. And I, I the hockey community in Minnesota is so important, and that's why I'm so proud to be here. Uh, Patrick Dishler did a great job of, of seeking out Joe Bennett, and Joe Bennett signed up. So I, I just want to say thank you to Joe Bennett for having us here. That's awesome, dude. Thank you for reminding me. I mean, we've been here for two weeks now, and I've had two of the best meals in my life. I've had two of the best chopped salads in my life, I can tell you that. Uh, I mean, last week I had the sirloin, the baseball uh, steak. Uh, this week I had the, uh, the the little Charlies, I think they're called. Oh. oh, they're fucking good. I mean, really, really good. I mean, just a couple of real, I, mean, I don't want to say steak sandwiches. They're like, that sells it short. I mean, just the, the most tender little steak medallion sandwiches with, with, with this really good, mild horseradish sauce, uh, creamy sauce. It's it's really, really good. And the onions. I mean, you get and the, oh, the caramelized bit. onions. Don't oh. forget caramelized onions. You know what? Scott, oh. and I, Scott and I did that meal last week after Wild Wednesdays, and we just sat here, and we're just fat and happy. What'd you it have? Just un- little Charlie's. Oh, you, had little little Char- you both had Little Charlie's? Well, yes. he was going to do the steak, oh. and I ordered the Little Charlie's, and then he he had, he's like, I'm switching the script. I switch. I, you know why? Because I was here. The, uh, I was here last weekend. I had the sirloin. The sirloin is amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing. And I, I mean, well, I mean, you can't go wrong when the owner tells you. I mean, last week, you know, they handed me a menu, and I said, "No, Joe, come over here, Joe Bennett." I said, "Tell me what's what's the best." He, he pointed at Little Charlie's and the sirloin. Yes. I mean, I, I've I've, already, I've I've wiped them both out. I I got to find something else to conquer now. Or you I mean, don't. Or you just order that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, I, I'm with right. and stick with it. I, I uh, I'm a creature of habit. When I find something that works, I don't deviate. Yeah, well, he but he also touted the pork chops. So I mean, I might have to. I might have to get me some swine. There's about week. five things on this menu that I. Uh, I once upon when I first moved to St. Paul, I actually. Uh, you always lived I, in St. Paul. What do you I, mean you I, moved I bartended to St. Paul? here for uh, for one night a week, so I, I I got to know the menu pretty well. So I. Uh, one I'll week. Oh, no, one night a week. Oh, one night a week. Yeah, Thursday nights was okay. my was okay. my night. But okay. I, I got to know the menu, and I'll tell you, there's a there's a handful of things: the short rib sandwich, the Fort Road. Uh, Tony had the the black and blue burger. I mean. There's a there's a ton of stuff that is, is good. So do yourself a favor and stop on by. Their breakfast is good too. Oh, next week we want to we let, let people know we're giving away some wild tickets. Uh, we're also giving away dinner and a ride to and from the game all uh, next week. But you got to be here. Do you have to be here, Patrick? Yep, you got to be, be here. here. So come to the show next week. Got to be here. Right? Present to win. Got to got to mention Wild Wednesdays. Got to mention Jeff Dubay yes. Show dot com. Make well, sure you show up. Hell, make that sure got to mention Tony Knight. What? I- Make sure that the Bennett family knows that, that you're listening and, and that you're coming out to support what we do here. All right. I mean, it's, it's, it's next Wednesday. It's 5 o'clock. We're going to be doing the show 5 o'clock next Wednesday at Bennett's on West 7th. Uh, if you show up and you see us sitting there doing a show and you don't come up and say something to us or, 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 or 
do you, how, how do people enter the contest? It could be a drawing or what? Yeah, just come in. We're gonna have a drawing. Here. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll see us. I mean, it's not. It's it's, it's a it's a cozy little place. So, I mean, if you can't see the idiots doing the podcast, uh, where you you know register to win you know fantastic prizes. Oh, there'll be a sign. Patrick promises a sign. So the other thing, come down here, have a beer, take the shuttle down West Seventh. Don't have to fight for parking spots. Yep. Smart, smart way to get to the game. Come here after the game for drinks. Yep. And whether it's a wild game or the or the high school hockey tournament going on all weekend long, I mean they'll be running the shuttle. Uh, I'm sure they've been running it today. I know they'll be running it tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Friday, Saturday, full show. So anyway, guys, uh, back to the wild, and then we welcome Shannon uh, Rosenthal into the conversation. Shannon, uh, t- t- tell the folks real quickly what you do. I know you write a blog. I write the uh, Stick Happens Hockey blog. I actually just started that this past August. Cool. How's it going for you? Uh, Other than the fact that you got to meet me and be on the show. Uh, it's go- actually it's going pretty well, considering. Despite that. Despite <laughs> yeah, despite that. I uh, no, it's going pretty well so far for having just started in August. So um gotten a lot of readers from mostly from Facebook and Twitter. So And what well, so one of the one of the great things about uh the, the Minnesota Wild uh internet community is I get to meet Shannon. Shannon wants to is write she, about is she the only person you haven't had a, a Twitter fight with yet? No, uh, no, we, we got a plan for later. That's how we get okay. people I to mean, a you blog. Know he fights with everybody on Twitter, or people fight with oh, me. I've I've gotten into fight. I've gotten into hockey fights with Twitter. I mean, there was the December 9th game against the New York Islanders where Matt Martin took that nasty hit on Keith Ballard, and from my viewpoint, from where I was at at that game, Matt Martin clearly lost his feet. I had six New York, New, uh, York Islanders fans tell me, I'm a girl, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, excuse me? Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, it's, hello, I grew up around hockey. I've, you know, worked for the Gopher Hockey Program, you know, marketing promotions. I've worked for the North Stars their last year up here. So it's like, um, I've been around hockey all my life. <laughs> And and I and that that's what's so great about the Minnesota uh, internet hockey community is, is there's there's so many people that you get a chance to meet and I got to meet Shannon Shannon's passionate um, she talked about writing a blog and I was like 100 percent make sure that you put your ideas out there mm-hmm. and I'll share them always because I mean what a great opportunity and then also there's so many passionate women fans uh, Taylor Martin um, all uh, all the ladies Cindy I mean there, there's Abby Ashley. Ashley. I mean, there, there's a there's a great community of women hockey fans online that are passionate, smart people, um, and Shannon's one of them. And uh, you know, that's why I think it's really great that we get to have you on the show and we get to share uh, Stick Happens blog because it's a it's a great opportunity for you to share um, your take on the Minnesota Wild. And w- what a great opportunity! Oh, the hockey ladies! Oh, the hockey ladies! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Scott right. singing again. All right, let's let's, let's go back. Uh, let's go back uh, a week. A week and change. Wild lose a tough one at home to Edmonton, and uh, you know, I, I was on this show. I was talking about that. Uh, you know, I'm not going down the moral victory road or anything, but that I wasn't going to get bent out of shape about it because I thought they played a really strong final 40 minutes, and and certainly didn't. I wouldn't have called it a losing effort. Shit happens in hockey. I mean, you know, you, you got you get hot goalies, you get some puck luck, whatever. I mean, you're going to lose a game like that once in a while. It says a ton that they went and beat Nashville on the road in their next game in regulation, and there was no fluke. I mean, they they they. They deserve to win that game. I mean, they, they, they played a fantastic game. And then, uh, then you know, at Colorado, it was just more of the same. I mean, the Avalanche can't do shit against us. They've got to be so sick of the Wild right now. They scored their first goal in, like, five games against us, and it's a garbage goal. The best of all that is Parisi, was, Parisi actually, he, he took a little shot. I mean, not yeah. really characteristic of, of what Zach is, but he, he did. He took a shot. He's like, oh, yeah, I'd be frustrated, too, if I scored one goal off a bad bounce in, like, four games. And he had, like, a grin on his face. So, I mean, that... That pretty much kind of sums up, you know, what the feeling is between the teams. But back to the Edmonton game, if we're going to lose a game, I want to lose that game. I want to lose that game and have it be an eye-opening loss to the worst team in the West that causes you to maybe hit the reset button and say, okay, okay, we're, we're not, we can't just like, you know, ride on our laurels at this point. We have to be ready for every game. And coming into the, uh, to the stretch we're coming into, I would rather it happen then and then you regroup and do what you did in Nashville. And this this win last night against Ottawa too, that that's not a that's not a dumpy Ottawa team. That that's an Ottawa team with a bunch of young kids and they're strong and they try to punch us. Yeah, uh, you know what's funny? Won, they won five in a row and they swept the West. They, Shannon Shannon wrote about that goal. Uh, she wrote about what goaltender interference is. You want to talk about it? All right. So the Colorado game on Saturday night, 
that goal, and I'm going to call it loosely call it a goal because clearly that goal should not have been allowed. I explained today on a very quickly put together blog post, and if you're wondering where it's at, it's at stickhappensblog.blogspot.com. I started out defining what goaltender interference is. If you remember the play, Cody Leopold clearly went into Devin Dubnik with the puck being lodged under his right pad. Cody McLeod, you mean? Yeah. Cody, Cody McLeod. No, the pad, the, 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 yeah, Cody, Cody McLeod went into Devin Dubnik. Yeah. Which, it basically shoved Dubnik into the net, which, who knew, who knew where the puck was at that point? Back into the net, basically allowing for that. He didn't. He, he, didn't he didn't drag it across the line before the contact. That, that, that's what they ruled, right? Well, no, no, they, no, that's no, what. No, that's what Toronto. Review, they can't review goaltender interference. They, yeah, can, they, re- sh- they yeah. can review if the goal, if the puck went over the net, over the line, but they cannot review if the if the refs did not call okay. goaltender okay. interference. And yeah. clearly, I mean, yeah, he did slide into him. But yeah. what I loved about that play is that Dubnik got up and he like two hands Hand slammed him to the ice, yes. and I'm like, I was like, kind of like pumped up about it. I'm like, I, mean, I was watching it on national TV. I'm like, hell yeah. I'm like, slam that sucker against the ice. Dubnik is no slouch. He will stand up for himself, too. And he's huge. What is he, like 6'5", six, 6'6"? Six, yes. six? Yep. And and he's, honestly, he he's more fiery than most of the team. Like, he gets yeah, into it. Yeah. He, he, he'll he he'll knock a guy down. He'll hit a guy in the back of the legs, like we talked about. Uh, yeah. The guy camped out in the in the crease well, last he, you night. You get in the paint. You, you're basically, your ankles are at the mercy of his stick. Okay. This, well, this is really into the chippy stuff here. Let's let's talk about the way that game ended. I mean, McLeod, you know, they send him out there and they they drop the puck. He makes a beeline for Granlin, cheap shots him. I mean, it was bullshit. Uh, it was it was it was, a, it was a bush play. But at the same time, doesn't Yo have to throw a bunch of? Doesn't he have to throw a fourth line out there? I mean, there's a couple seconds on the clock. You're having a meaningless faceoff. They got a thug lined up at wing that's going to charge your center. Why is Granlin on the ice there? That, he that is a mistake. He didn't have him lined up because they have last change. Yeah, so it was in Colorado. But it doesn't matter. When there's, there's that much time on the clock, you put a fourth line out there. I don't give a fuck who's well, yeah. probably, who's probably got your, last change. You're basically, you don't need any to, other team you play, though, that isn't going to happen. So you don't have to worry about three seconds left in the game. I don't know. I, I think, and I'll I tell think you the coach has always got to no, be that, on top of that. I'll tell you he didn't have a goon line out there. That wasn't a goon line. That, McLeod's that, a goon. No, but McLeod was the only but goon. You know, but with three seconds left in the third period and a face off at center ice, you don't wait to play off what the other team does. You just send out a fourth line. But, but here's, 100% of the but, time. But here's what I'm saying. He was out there with Landeskog and, and their top line guys. They, they Landeskog's snuck, a goon. They, well, Landeskog is a goon, but he's a top line guy. They snuck right. McLeod out there but, but for again, the purpose of doing this. And there, and there was rules in place that they limit or are in place to cause this not to happen. I yeah, know what? And, and when I when you, read, when you read a quote from Patrick Waugh that basically said, if Landis Cog is going to get fined five grand, he, this is a direct quote, Landis Cog gets fined five grand, he should have punched him hard enough to make it worth it. Like well, that's that was, a, and that was referring that's, to a punch on Koivu. Yeah, 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 from Landis to Koivu. So this is, this is the coach this that is going on record for this. And, all this does is reinforce my opinion and my, and my position. What Colorado does is irrelevant. Who's got the last change is irrelevant. There's three seconds left on, on the clock, and a meaningless you know, three seconds it is, with sure. the face up at center ice. Sure. I mean, college hockey has less bullshit than the NHL. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I, I, I can't tell how many times you know, in, in the final minute of a game I'll see Lucia throw, you know, th- three or four defensemen on the ice. I mean, they'll put, like, three defensemen and a couple of fourth liners. Sure. I mean, I just piece it together with guys. Hide, hide the Taylor Camaradas of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Mike, but, Mike Yo should not have had Granlin down the ice right there. Yeah. He just shouldn't. Here's, here's the other thing, too, with that. And it, that was just the last straw, basically. If you watch the whole game, the refs really let things slide, especially on the Colorado Avalanche side. Now, yeah, remember, they are playing the Wild, so that's kind of like... That's oh, yeah, we're well, wait, 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 this this Avalanche team has McLeod as an assistant captain. I mean, they're bush league. They're they bu- have Landeskog as their captain. They're bush and league. And, and and you know what? And and they took the captaincy away from from Stasny, and then they wonder why he doesn't sign there. Why why there's just no shot that he's going to re up in Colorado. I mean, it, I think you know the Colorado organization is run by um, some legends. 
but they play a, a Bush League brand of hockey. They're, they are not close. And, and I said coming into this year, they had a terrible offseason. Even the, you, you add Jerome Aginla, and, and Aginla likes to – he, he likes to take shots at the wild, and he's a wild killer and all of that. But Jerome McGinley and and I think Brad Stewart, hindsight's twenty twenty in his mind. I think he's probably like, I made the wrong decision. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, but he chased the money. They gave him three years. They, yeah. they gave him three years, and he's, 30, he's damn near 40 years old. Well, I mean, and look where Colorado is at the standings, and they basically have played this physical – Let's beat the crap out of the other team play all season and look where they're standing and look where they're sitting in the standings right now. I mean, if the playoffs were starting today, there's no way Colorado would be in it. And this is think, after. I don't think Colorado's making a period. Like it's, and this it is matter. after <laughs> they won the Central Division last year. Yeah. And I think that I truthfully think that the reason he signed is because he thought there was going to be another trip to the playoffs. I mean, Jerome McGinley might have followed the money, but he's a competitor and he wants to win a cup. Yeah, so but, I don't think that he's just going to chase money for the sake of chasing money. Well, I, I think three he, years. I think he thought that he was going to have a better chance with getting back to the playoffs and and making a run with you know with McKinnon and and, and the other people oh, that yeah. they had. But yeah, the fact of the matter is, you have to follow your leadership, and Patrick Waugh's leadership is clearly displayed with who his captains are. Sure. And and you talked about legends. There might be two legends, but there's a dichotomy of what those legends are. Joe Sackick isn't playing this kind of. I mean. He wouldn't be doing this kind of shit. He's afraid, but he's the top guy. I mean, he's, he's the top guy. But there, there's in their executive structure, he uh, he has some power. But Patrick Wall also wanted some general manager esque power as a coach too. Col- Colorado's getting exactly that. You know, you reap what you sow. You know, same thing with St. Louis last year. St. Louis wanted to watch, wanted to punch people in the mouth, and they wanted to bully the whole league. Well, then they ended up hurt, and they ended up in the out in the first round of the playoffs. All right, guys uh, and, and Gail, in closing, we've only got a few minutes left here. Looking ahead, they go on the road, Washington, Carolina, home for Colorado, New Jersey, Anaheim, then a killer little road stretch at St. Louis, at Nashville. Uh, just, a, just, a, just a quick two cents. Uh, what do you see? A couple of road games out east and then uh, home for three. You know, uh, these, these East Coast teams are really good right now. Capitals have been winning. Uh, uh, New Jersey, I think they got a shutout from Corey Schneider last night. Mm-hmm. Um you got to be careful. You got you can't go out there and, and, and lay a turd, especially if you got to come back and you got to play uh, Nashville and you got to play a couple of the, the tough Western Conference teams. It's also going to be interesting too because the Wild also have some uh, several back to backs coming up, and it's going to be interesting whether or not they're going to play Dubnik or if they're even going to put Kemper or Backstrom in on the second night of those back to backs. I definitely think Backstrom's not going to be. Backstrom you know, will never play yeah. again for the Minnesota Wild unless no. there's some catastrophic meltdown. But I will uh, or injuries. I will say this: like everything I've read about Dubnik, not just from beat writers but quotes from players, is this guy comes to the arena and he's like, "There's no question I want to play." Like he he is he is more energized and like uh, jacked up about playing than needing a night off. I think it it, it just further kind of just. Pours gas in the fire to let him go night in, night out, and that that type of competition. I think, I mean, it, we might ride him ninety five percent the rest of the year, and if he can handle it, do it. Well, well look, look what he's done. He was just named uh, NHL First Star of the Month uh, for the month of February. First wild player ever. Yep. And also, there's a Parise quote too, and he was like, you know, I I, I know I would never miss a game yeah. if I if I couldn't. If, if if I had to, and and I think Devin Dubnik's the same way. So I, I which is exactly why he fits in that locker yes. room. Which, which is exactly why this locker room. You can add a guy like Chris Stewart, who previously has had questions about whether he's going to come bring it, and I think that he's going to be a, a strong contributor. Uh, this team right now, and and you know, maybe I need to pump my brakes a little bit because I get a little bit excited. But this team right now is something special because top to bottom in this lineup, the Bergenheim, right? He he's he's added. What, what Matt Cook was, and maybe a little more because he's a little bit more skilled. Yeah, top to bottom, I, a guy like Jordan Schrader deserves to be in the lineup, and, and there's not one guy I would pull out, to include Kyle Brodnick. Ah. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it. Uh, that's going to do it for Wild Wednesday. Uh, be here next Wednesday. Be here in person next Wednesday. 5 o'clock at Bennett's Chop and Rail House on West 7th. Fantastic food, drink, and we've got all kinds of giveaways, giving away wild tickets, giving away dinner, a ride to the game. We're just give, give, give. So come on by 5 o'clock. you got to be here to win. So stop on by.